pulling and all of that. I just want to make sure that I have that those steps down right so I'm not breaking anything. Yeah, you're not. And the only thing is to make sure you're doing right. You need to, and this is one of those weird things. I've ran into it before. I'm, I, I, I'll do it too. When you're working with others, you always need to make sure to, I mean, I don't know if you call that re rebasing. I, I feel like that there's a term for it, this, this, this use case scenario we're talking about that I'm, I just, I don't necessarily know the term, but you just need to make sure you go to the main branch before you push anything, even if it's on your own branch, you need to go into main, you need to make sure you've pulled any current pull requests. Any, so anything that's in main, and then make sure you merge your branch with that. Okay. Because what ends up happening is if you push your branch and let's say I think it looks good and then I merge that with master. Well, let's see, that's not the right scenario. Yeah, see, I'm always confused on that, but it, but I basically, but I mean, essentially what ends up happening is you end up losing data. Um, so yeah, I'm not giving you that. Now that so I'm, my, uh, I guess, well, so here's my specific question. I, have a branch that's off of main right so for this example it'll be called you know fix form so get branch fix form i fix the form yep and i get add get commit for, uh, fixing form and get push and i've mm -hmm. pushed that to the remote repository mm -hmm. i open up a pull request it has not been merged yet the pull request is still there what I've got to do now is get off of my fixed form branch, go back to the main, or optionally, alternatively, open up another branch to be able to push that um, second fix up. So we'll call second form fix. So where I get caught is that I continue to push. I'm always pushing to GitHub. I just do a small fix, test that it works, and I push it. Yes. Right. And I feel like where I got caught was I didn't hop off the branch and open up a second branch. Right. And and because I didn't get caught there where my conundrum is, if I hop off a first branch before going to second branch. I need to pull from main to make sure that I've got the code back right and I'm fixing that second form. Is that the process? Yes. Right? Or, or okay. yeah, it can I be. I was not doing that. Yeah, or, or I was gonna say, even if you're on the same branch, even if you're in that same branch and you're, you're gonna add more code to that branch, yeah. you still, and in the interim, you need to merge with main. And I was gonna say, you don't even have to hop ah, in. Okay. You, you, you don't even have to hop into main. You can just be in your branch. So if you're in the fixed form branch, you can do get merge main from that branch and it'll pull anything that's from main. It'll pull it into your current branch. Um, so if I get done with the first fix, Mm -hmm. I submit the pull request. So, so I then stop. Get merge stop, main. Stop right. See, you you, you should okay. you should prior to submitting the pull request, you should merge then. So you're in fixed That's form. That's where I've been doing it. Okay. Yeah, you're in fixed form. You make a fix. You're ready to push. But prior to pushing, you need to do get merge main. That way, you're pulling anything from main into your 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 branch. So that what I didn't understand. You solved it for me. Thank you for that. Coach. And we may get, I mean, you, it. <laughs> yeah, you, you may, and I think I was going to say, I mean, again, I'm, I, I, I'm not a get uh, expert by, by, by any stretch, but I think that that should take care of the, this, at least the specific issue we're referring to. Okay. Here. But try and see, and there, there yeah. may be, we, we may, again, depending on the use case, you may, we, we may find that, okay, now that we're not quite doing, doing it right. So we, we'll figure yeah, out how this will go. I have found that I'm really good at losing code inside of Git. Everybody says to me, hey, man, you ain't going to break Git. You know what? I'm the guy <laughs> that can lose well, some code. Well, you won't, break, you won't break it. It's just a matter of finding a way to get it back out. Because that's, you're, that's you're right. What, there is yeah. always that's a way. That's I'm scared. Yeah. Well, it is. No, and you're, you're right. And there, there is actually good. Yeah, it's easy to say, oh, don't be worried. Don't, don't worry about it. You can always fix it. You can always fix it, but it can be a bear to get it fixed and to get it right. Yeah. So it's. Um, yeah, and I'm just not like my Kung Fu flow is not. Uh, I'm like not a black belt and get foo yet. Right. Sure. Get hub yeah. foo. So yeah, uh, it's coming. I'll get right. there. All right. Are you so seeing, thanks for answering yeah. that? <clears throat> are, are you seeing this volume? My Mac's got the little volume icon yeah. here. Yeah, yeah you're wide yeah. open there. Yeah. It, well, it won't it, it won't go, go go away. I can't get it to. Uh, that's, that's kind of a gun. 
annoying, to, to be honest. Um, okay. Should probably start recording. Um, hmm, what if I mute? There it goes. There you go. And can, can you hear me still? I can hear you. Yes, okay, sir. I'm back. Okay, good. Okay, I just, I'm muted, not unmuted. That seemed to got rid of. Okay, so this week, and so we'll look at some of the code that I pushed. I mean, last week, basically, I added a, uh, let's see, I added a button that allows. And the, the wiring for that button. Yeah, yeah and it allows the recruit to submit for re review, I think is going to be the status. But basically, I added the underlying, the wiring for the status of a user. So now we've got two sort of, uh, there's, there's two fields we've added. We've added a, a role field, which would be, you know, are you a applicant, student, mentor, admin, you know, so we, we've got, we, we, we've got the attribute in place for that on a user. But then I, and then I also added this status to, well, actually it's a, uh, profile status is what I called it because if you recall profile one of status. our yeah. yeah in fact yeah I'm sharing the screen so we can for those following along at home on our recruit on our recruit tracker app uh, when a recruit applies we're going to have all these various statuses that are going to they're going to they're going to move through ideally they're going to move through these their profile is going to move through these statuses at various times so when they first sign up I don't know if we want that to be applied or we could have some neutral status but they can be applied and then the admin the idea is that somebody on vetsu code side who's reviewing applications is going to you know either accept it they can put it under re review they can accept it if it needs more work they can send it back to the recruit and then there's a bunch of email stuff we'll want to do here too obviously when the status changes we'll want to notify the you know either notify the recruit and or whoever the, the administrator is. And that's the other thing too. Do we want to, do we want just one designated person as administrator or anybody who's an admin should get all email notifications? So that those are all kinds of questions we'll, we'll want to ask. And we'll want to figure out. But we'll look at that. We'll see how uh, hopefully we can get through, uh, through this relatively quickly. Maybe we'll have some time to look at that stuff. If not, we can do it on Wednesday. Okay, so this week, week five, and again, for those following along at home, this is the Rails 6 course on LinkedIn Learning. Uh, week five is going to be active record and active relation. So again, we've, Greg, as you alluded to, we've been looking at examples of, of this as we've been working with through our Recruit Tracker app and prior to this, but this, we'll just dig a little deeper into it here. So, um, Active record is, uh, and I'm taking a lot of this from the video because he does a good job of sort of putting words to it, what, what it is, but essentially it's a design pattern that allows Rails to interact with relational databases as, uh, as uh, objects. And that's versus static rows. So if we think about the way we normally interact with a database, at least like when we're, if we're using MySQL or if we're using Postgres, if we're actually logged into the database at the command line, you have select statements that you run and you sort of, you are, you're interacting with things sort of, you know, at least the way I, I said it, I don't think he said this in the video, but I'm looking at that as a static row. When you're running a command, you're sort of pulling data from a static row. Whereas again, uh, what active record does for Rails is, and again, this is true for other frameworks too. Uh, I mentioned ORMs, which are object relational, mappers, but basically all the major web development frameworks have object relational mappers that they use, but they do just that. They allow you to interact with the database via, ob via objects. And we'll look at some examples. In fact, let's go ahead and look at some examples of that here. I've got, uh, and Greg, we, we've done this before, um, you know, user.new, dot user equals user.new. You're creating a new user object here. Now that could be equivalent. You could think about, you know, you could think about, uh, well, I, the, yeah, I, I don't know the, I don't know the SQL off the top of my, my head well, well enough, but you can think about inserting a new row into a user table in a database. Well, that would sort of be equivalent to what you're doing here. Um, you know, user.firstName equals Mark. You know, this, that's, that's an SQL, assuming it's an existing row that's in a table. 
that would be an update statement. That would be like an update SQL statement. User dot dot save. You know, you're actually running a save command. To actually save it to the database. User dot delete. So again, you're uh, they're all SQL commands. They're all basic SQL commands. But again, they're object based, and that you're you know in, in this case user is the uh, is the uh, object. And actually, these should be all lowercase u's here. I think that's the <clears throat> rookie mistake I made when I was asking you whatever that was Wednesday or Thursday was I mm -hmm. had done it yep. and I was able to see it in the console. I was able to get stuff to it. So manipulating it in the console is very different than saving it to the database. And that's the lesson that I learned was once yeah. you said, Hey fella, did you save it to the database? And I was like, mm -hmm. Oh, well, rookie move here. Yeah. yeah and, and he reinforces that in the video too, that essentially you're, I mean, sure. he, didn't, he didn't say it this way, but in my mind, essentially you're just working in memory when you're in the data, it, uh, yeah. when you're in the console working yeah. until you Versus actually the database right right until you actually yeah, save okay. it you haven't actually made that sql command to actually save it to the, the database yeah okay. i was really um twisted up there because i could see like it's this is this is easy for me to see i can manipulate the data but the thing don't work right why don't you <laughs> work right and, and yeah, you, you don't have to make that mistake too too many times before you. No, I got it. I think or I you, you get it in your head that yeah, yeah you, you get it in your yeah. head that okay, I, I have to say, save it. But it oh, is I handy. Think. Like there, there's times when you don't want to write to the the database. You just want to see okay, is this method available to to me? Or uh, you know, if I'm trying to extract this piece of data from the database, you know, via Ruby, how, how do I? do it? So you're not you, you don't want to necessarily save anything. You just want to get the commands because I I. I'll, I'll often log into the console and do a lot of that work. And then, okay, once, once I've verified, okay, I know I can use this method or this is the way I want to do it. Then I'll go into the controller or into the model inside my app, and actually write the code there. Yeah. So okay. it's just a good way to <clears throat> yeah. test all that kind of stuff out. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get my chairs out of whack here. Yeah. My cat's out of whack over here. Cat's trying to get to my water. There we go. Okay, uh, so that that is active record. So active relation is sort of the other um, active relation is the other um, design pattern, I guess, if, if we want to use that term in Rails. And uh, so he describes this good. A R E L or Arial is 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 often what these are called, and this is the sort of relational algebra is what he calls that, but essentially handles complex relational queries. So again, this is uh, when you think of queries that are going to go across tables, so things like joins, those kinds of things, but even to, even in single tables where you're doing where statements, order statements, things like that, uh, those are active relation, um, active relation calls. And some examples here, and I just, I just did a screenshot rather than having to type these out, but you know, where you, 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 you'll, you'll use the where method often, which is essentially the, uh, uh, similar to a where clause uh, inside SQL. But the example there, user.where, first name, you know, is equal to Kevin. So that, that's going to, and, you know, here the relational part is instead of returning a single record, you're going to potentially return multiple records. So in this case, again, there could be multiple users who have the first name as Kevin, so there's going to be multiple uh, there, or there, there potentially could be multiple users return. User dot, uh, users dot order, uh, last name, A ASC, ASC is ascending, and then limit five. Now notice we're chaining, um, we're chaining method calls here. So not, not only are we calling this users dot order, and we're going to order by last name, then we use, we can use the dot no the dot notation, and then you can actually chain another method onto that or multiple, you know, you can, there's, I don't think there's any necessarily any limit to how many of these methods you can chain, but in this case, we're adding this limit five. So this says, you know, give me all, uh, return, give me all of the users. I want to sort in ascending order by last name. And I'd only want you, I only want the first five. So you can chain, uh, so that, that's one of the cool things you can do here. And again, under the covers, uh, you know, ideally Rails is gonna be more efficient about this than uh, more efficient about this. 
uh, about the SQL queries that it's going to put together than you will will be. So again, you're sort of leveraging the framework to do a lot of that uh, SQL query by using Rails methods rather than just trying to write SQL yourself. Um, and then and it's also- not, it, It's again, as you've said previously, since Rails is database agnostic, it's not just SQL that it's talking to. It depends on what database that you have linked into it. It'll, it talks to any of them with these same litany of com commands. Right, and it, it, we have whether it's MySQL, Postgres, and then even, um, you know, even the no SQL flavors too. And, you know, each, you know, I don't know how the development, you know, generally, you know, again, the open source community is vast. And so the idea is you have people from each of these various groups. So you have MySQL folks that are doing the MySQL pieces of active record. You have Postgres folks who, and I mean, ideally these are gonna be people who know Postgres very well, and then they dabble in the Rails world too. So they're writing those queries. I only mentioned that to say, I, you know, that this, and I don't know, you'd have to talk to some of the Rails contributors at a low level to know, but I, you know, from an efficiency standpoint, I just wonder how efficient, you know, the Postgres queries are versus the MySQL queries versus the no SQL flavors that are out there. Um, so I, I really can't answer those things. I'm, I'm sure it's a balance between co complexity and, hey, we, we just want something that works. So, I mean, there is a convenience, even if, you know, something to be said for, even if writing a query yourself might be more efficient, if Rails gets you 80% of the way there and you don't have to put any thought into it versus, you know, actually having to, you know, take some bandwidth to, to figure out a quick query, then there's certainly, um, you know, there's certainly uh, advantages to that. Okay. All righty. Uh, he does a video on the Rails console. I, I won't say much there. We worked in the, the console be, before, but again, same as I, IRB, but uh, in addition to all the Ruby pieces that IRB gives you, also the context of your Rails project is, is loaded. So you have full access to any methods, any controller methods that you've written, any kind of model methods, anything like, like that. When you run Rails console versus, uh, versus IRB, and, and, and of course you can only run Rails C within the context of a Rails pr project. If you try to run Rails C, you know, and you're not inside of a actual, inside, inside of a Rails uh, app, then you know, it's not, not gonna load. So again, when you run Rails in the context of a pr project, it gives you access to all the default rail stuff in addition to any methods you've written or anything like that, that, um, that you've got access to. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, and then he does, we're gonna do a bullet on each of the sort of CRUD options here, create, uh, read, update, and destroy. So create records, he just covers new, uh, new versus Create, I think new is probably all that we've, we've looked at, but you can also run create, which actually takes that save piece out of it. So, you know, in the example you talked about where you forgot to save an ob object after having created it, you could have run create and it would do all that for you. So for instance here, I've just got, you know, uh, user.new, using user.new only creates it in, Memory, again, you can update the fields, but you've got to remember to run user.save uh, to actually save it to the database, whereas user.create uh, would actually create it for you on the fly. Now you want to pass the options in. Let's see, do I have that? Yeah, I don't, I don't have an example of that here, but you can do user.create, and then as, as part of the arguments for that method, you would pass any, um, you would pass any attributes. So for instance, again, take, taking the user model, we could run user.create and then inside parentheses for the arguments, we would pass, you know, first name, first name equals John, last name equals whatever we'd want it to be. And then also depending on, from a validation standpoint, from a required field standpoint, you're gonna have to get all, because again, the, the validations are gonna apply inside the console just like they do, you know, if, if you're using the web browser, uh, obviously the password, password confirmation are gonna, you're gonna have to pass those things into. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, update records. Um, 
So he mentions find and save versus find and update. Um, so find and save. Um, so we'll look at the example he did here. So th this is going to be basically you're finding by ID. I mean, you could find by anything you, you want, but I mean, finding by uh, um, finding by the primary key is, is a fairly common way to do it. But you can see an example he used. Uh, they, they, and they use the, keep in mind, the CMS app that they use for the videos. You've got a subjects model and a pages model. So in this case, he sends subject.find1. So that's going to find uh, the subject record that has an ID of one. And then he is updating. Um, so you can see the SQL here. And then, yeah, notice he's calling subject.name. And, and then, yeah, first subject, he's up updating the name. And then he's running save here. So again, that's similar to the creating a new object. But notice here, there's an update statement. So that, that that's just one clue. Just notice that the S actual SQL that's being run is actually an update statement and not, not an insert right so that, that the clue there is the idea there is that uh, an up an existing record is being updated as opposed to inserting a new record into the database also the other thing to notice is that the entire record is not being saved or, or being updated just the individual attribute that was specified so in, in this case name was the attribute that was updated so that's what we see here update subject sets subjects dot name to initial subjects and then you see the other fields here, but they're just actually being re returned. Uh, only the single attribute that was changed is being updated. And again, the advantage there is, I mean, that's more efficient from a, a database transactions standpoint. That, that's uh, obviously right. more, efi more efficient than up updating all, all of the all of the all of the attributes in a in a uh, row. Uh, find, then he gives example of find and up, update. So in this case, uh, subject.find, and then he's doing, uh, he's calling the update method here. And in this case, they're changing name. In this case, he's changing two, two things, name and position. And then again, if we look at the update statements, update subject set subjects.name to next subject, and then subject.position to two. So notice there's two fields being up, uh, updated there. Um, so yeah, I mean, generally when you write, again, these are just console examples. Generally when you're doing this stuff, either inside the, um, inside the uh, controller or a model inside your app, usually the shorter the update statements or for instance, the create statement that we, when, when we talk about creating new records, generally you'll do it that, that way. I mean, I've done it before where you actually explicitly do save, you'll just, uh, call new and then call save. Um, I mean, sometimes I'm, I'm just generally I'll default to more explicit code than maybe having something that, that's a shortcut. But I mean, these create and update statements are fairly common. So it's not, um, I, I don't know that you're losing anything by not being more, uh, by, by not being more, uh, more verbose. Okay. De, uh, deleting records. So he highlights there uh, destroy versus delete. Generally, destroy is what you want to do. He actually didn't explain both. He mentioned that there was uh, destroy versus delete, and I actually put a link in here. So yeah, you can click on that too if you want to the difference. And then even this didn't give me a grade. It does show you what active record says about each one. So I, I just sort of put that there as a link. You can go back and read it on your own. Essentially, at least in my mind, the, the, the way I've always been taught and the way I've understood it, and it's, and it's what my experience is, because I've done it before too, is destroy takes into consideration any relationships that a record might have. So what I mean by that is, let's say, and we'll talk about has many and belongs to relationships in a second, but if a given record has a relationship then it'll destroy those any associated records too. So what I mean by that is, let's say you are, uh, let's see. So so we use example he gives in the he uses in his app, which is a pages and a subjects uh, relationship and a subject 
belongs to a page and a page can have many sub subjects. So in that case, if you delete a page, if there are, uh, if there are subjects that are related to, to, to that, you're gonna to wanna to delete the subjects too, because in that case, you're gonna have orphaned data, right? If somebody tries to view a subject and the pages that it's associated to is not, not there, then you're gonna get a the database error. So destroy takes into account those relationships and it's generally more destructive, which you know maybe sounds like a bad, bad thing, but, but you really want that because you don't want, if there's a relationship there and the parent, um, you know, the parent model or the parent record, I should say, is being destroyed, then you're gonna want that child record to be destroyed too, so. But there may be times, again, you just want to know the difference between the two, because there may be times where you don't mind if the relationship, you don't mind if you've got an orphan record there. That is all I have to say about that. We could, uh, without, uh, okay. without maybe a more explicit example, that, 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 that's, that, that's probably the best we're going to be able to do to explain that, okay? Finding records. So we mentioned using the find method earlier, but again, uh, that you just do whatever the model name is called dot find, and then you're gonna pass the primary key in there. And that, that's one of the primary ways you'll, I mean, I, I, I often find that's probably the most used way for me to find information. I might do some other where clause. So for instance, the example we used earlier, where let's say we're looking for everybody named Kevin. Um, for the example of that. Um, yeah, it was just north up there a little bit. Yeah, just there. So yeah, there, um, yeah, usually dot where first name Kevin. Again, this is a relational call. So you're going to get multiple records back. But let's say you get five users back. All of them are first name Kevin. I'm looking for Kevin Locklear. Let's say, okay, I, I see that guy has the, an ID of three. And then if I want to quickly grab his record, then I would do user dot find three. And then that, that's gonna return that specific user for me. So that, that's a fairly common one we use. Um, so go ahead. Setting that primary key is that Rails automatically does that. Rails does right. automatically do, do that. Generally it's okay. sequential, you know, it just starts. And in fact, if you yeah. look, you know, you can look in your, your dev servers, you've created users there. It's gonna start with, with one and just yeah. go up from there. And you, you can't. So I don't. I don't care to be changing primary keys on these things. Generally, you don't want to just leave it alone, right? Yeah. yeah. Generally, you don't want to do that. And I've had occasions where maybe you're importing data from somewhere else, and you're trying to set up a relationship based on some data you've already got. Yeah, then you've got to go. go in there and monkey with primary keys. And it, I mean, generally, you don't want to do that. Uh, uh, Rails does. You know, Rails does give you ways to to do that. But just uh, you know, you're. Um, you know, it, it, it creates another layer of, of complexity. Uh, and, and, you know, if that can't be avoided, again, if you're importing data from somewhere else and you're trying to create a relationship based on some existing data, you know, it's just, just one of those pills you, you have to sw swallow, but you don't want to introduce that complexity unless you, you, you have to, though. Okay. Uh, conditional statements, again, we looked at some where's, I mean, where's a fairly common one. Again, just an example here, user.where, email is marklocklear at gmail.com. That's going to return. Um, now, again, this is still a relational, even though we think of it in our mind as, you know, for instance, in our app, we've added a validation for that email address has to be unique. So in this case, you know, assuming that the data is clean, we know it's going to only return one user, but it's still a relational Paul, and he makes that point in the video that there's only certain things, there are only certain methods that are available to the uh, primary calls, like using find where it returns a single record versus a relational call where even though it may only return one record because it's a relational call, uh, there's certain things you can't do. And I've been bitten by that more than once. I'm trying to do something with, uh, uh, I'm in the console or even I, I guess inside the app writing some code and because I used a where clause. Now, one of the things he mentioned too is you can add a, a you know, 
you, you may not notice I did the syntax slightly differently than what he, he does too, but you can also yeah, use parentheses. And the, if you're going to call, make additional calls here, then you do have to add the parentheses to it. But, but one of the points I think he makes the videos, you can call dot last and that will turn this into, it'll, it'll return, it'll turn it into a single call rather than a, uh, I guess an active record call instead of a, a uh, active relation call. And then that, that will give you these other methods. Also, you can pass multiple. I've just put example here. You can call multiple. Um, you can pass multiple attributes in here. So for instance here, user dot where, you know, status dot two and co cohort three, for instance, in, 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 in our app, we haven't got, we haven't, we haven't gotten as far as setting a, a cohort yet, but cohort will probably be a separate database table and we'll want to make a relationship between those. So the idea is when recruits sign up, depending on, I think, you know, one way, I, again, I'm just talking this through now, one of the way we'll probably do it is set a cohort for a certain time, time frame. And once that a cohort is active and anyone who applies any new user accounts that are created during a certain time frame will have an association and we'll have a, a cohort set. So but just just to use as as an example, if we want to search for all users where their status is two, and I don't even know what status is right now, but let's say status is uh, submitted for review, that their profile status is submitted for re review. Maybe we want all students that are in that status submitted for review, and they're part of the summer 2021 co cohort. You know, so again, the, the idea there is you can pass multiple attributes in. And then I've got a, just an example of an order clause there too that, that you can call. Okay, uh, final one they talk about is uh, one-to-many associations. Um, so two things that need to be done that the, this relationship is created. Uh, and again, we won't go real, real deep in, 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 into this here just because I'll just say it's outside of the, the scope of what, what we're doing, but I just wanted to wanted to make mention of it, uh, that when we create associations in Rails, that we create a relationship in the database, as well as defining the relationship in the models. And the way, basically the way you do this is um, that we use generators. When we use generators to create models, there's certain methods we'll pass in there. And essentially, it's the primary key association. So again, in the example, he, he uses the subject and pages models. So uh, again, here, uh, the, the two sides of the relation are a, a has many relation and a belongs to relation. So in the case example, he used a subject has many pages and a page belongs to uh, belongs to a subject. Um, and again, in the, the models is where we would define those. So in, 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 the, in, the, in, the exam, in his case, page.rb, you know, uh, app models page.rb, we would have it, we would have a has many. And I think the actual um, syntax is has many colon, I think there's a colon in there, has many pages. And then inside the page model, you'd have belongs to subject and, and um, yeah. I was gonna say note that one is plural. I think the has many, I, I think I've got this right. Has many is plural and then belongs to is singular. And the deeper you get into this, you'll get bitten. I, I still get bitten by it, but um, <laughs> The singular and plural associations can really bite you in the butt, not just on the generator side. I think we've talked about that some that when you're generating, yeah. uh, when you're generating, whether it's scaffolding or uh, either controllers and models, there's a convention. And I, again, I, I don't, I, I don't do it enough to, 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 to just be able to, uh, just to just be able to rattle it off here, but it's always smart to check. I usually look at the documentation first, but if you get the, um, if you get the singular versus plural wrong, it, it can ca it can cause you some pain, and then that that's um, that's true also for these model associations when you're doing uh, uh, has many belongs to, and then also just made a, a mention of has and belongs to many too. If you want a many to many association, you can also do many to many associations, 
uh, that that you could also do uh, that that the singular verb versus plural when you're defining the, those associations that that matters and um, so yeah that that is all for week five what questions comments or observations <clears throat> it's um i really feel like this is where it kind of comes together with rails and the power and the strength of rails is this lesson was you know in in the module itself and the video itself it was really short but there was it was packed with a lot of information dense enough that i really feel like i need to come back to it yeah dense is the right word there well and the other, when i went through it i was taking notes and taking notes and then i just was <laughs> like okay this is too much man it's point i, I right. go back through this man well and what it is i will say is it, it's the kind of thing where it'll make sense when you come back to it like having done like you probably haven't had your first real rails app yet where you can really i mean hope yeah, hopefully like this break something yeah, yeah i mean hopefully this recruit tracker will, will be that for you but you know it's one of those things it's worth revisiting you know six six months or a year down the road yeah okay. uh, because yeah. it'll it'll make more sense than like really week week five is one of those weeks first few weeks like okay yeah I, I, you know even if you're not yeah, a rails yeah, yeah. Even, even if even if you're 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 you're, you're not a rails gal or, or guy you can sort of wrap your brain around of it. But we five when you get into that level, it's like, okay, if you haven't really done rails and really dug in at a deeper level, then yeah, you can wrap your brain around it, but it doesn't really, without some context of having worked and spent a lot of time in a, a rails app, it, it sort of falls yeah. flat. So yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. <clears throat> All righty, let's look at some of the work we did last week. Um, so I'm gonna open up that and I'm on main now, so uh, I don't know if you've pulled okay. the latest code, but um, so I'm going to start the server up and just start off by looking at what we've got. Down there. Okay, so, and I, I put a couple of uh, tickets in, some of them are sort of low hanging fruit, like for instance, you know, list of recruits shouldn't be be here if you can't, you know, if you're not authorized to view the list of recruits, then why, why have the link there? So that's one on the, the so, and, navigation and you remember, part. you know, why I put that there was just to save myself time. Right. Well, right. and it bouncing, is, yeah. Bouncing around. Oh, and no, then no. And I it, came, it's, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's good for it to be there, but, but it should only be, be there if you're an admin, right? Yeah. So that so what I did is added the submit for review. Button. Okay, there it is. Yep. And again, the the wiring is there for it. And it, it works, but it's I mean it, there's there's still some more to do. And I, I think I add, in fact, let's go ahead and look at uh so I think I put some notes in after I, I yeah, I really appreciated it. you putting those tickets in there where I could kind of well and it's yeah, I mean you gotta um start like okay. But I mean a remote gig. Let's try. A recruit tracker because yeah you're at a point where like you can do a lot of the stuff but I, I can't just throw i can't just throw a one sentence requirement out there you, you you don't you don't know enough at this point to be able to go in and do it but if i if i do a little of it there i can from i can um I, I think you're far enough along so okay so i added it i had wiring for it so both uh so still to do both the user both the user and one or more admin should get email so right we need to add me email notifications so we, we'll look maybe we'll use this opportunity just to look at um look at how we'll do these things we'll just talk through it and then if, if you can carve yeah, out i would appreciate this that week. i haven't messed with the mailer yet so and then we need to add some validation to the recruits profile before allowing them to submit we don't want recruits submitting an incomplete application and what i mean by that is for instance so for instance let's just look uh, let's look at what we've got so right now we've got the submit for review button so this is inside the show view of the user's profile. So let's go ahead and look at show, uh, user show. And so here's the submit for review button. So this is using the button two method in Rails. Uh, so button two just creates a, a button. This submit for review is just the simple, it's simply the text submit for, for review that you see on the button. And now the fun part is this applied to submitted path method 
And then we're also passing a user ID into that and then method post. So what is all that? So a couple pieces here. Number one is the routes piece. And then the other piece is the controllers piece, users controller, okay. So just to give you an idea of how I coded this up and how I think about these things. First thing I did was create the button. I think, I think this is what the way I, the way I did it. First thing I did was create the button and I think I had a bogus um, method, controller method in here. So we need, so when you're thinking about this logic, we need a couple of things. We need a button, we need some action. It, it could be it could be a model action or a controller action. In my case, we created a controller action or controller method for it. So we need a controller method that when you click the button, it's gonna to go to the method and do something. In, in this case, we wanna change the uh, we want to change the user's profile status. And then, uh, so let's lo look at that. So let's look at the user controller first. So I created a controller method called applied to submitted. And I don't know, we, might, we may want to remain, rename this at the time it made sense. Now I'm like, is that? Um, but essentially what this does is changes the profile status from applied to su submitted. Now, what we're going to, you can probably see if you think, sort of think out, what we're going to end up with is probably four or five different methods that are going to, going to, going to be like this, right? And if we go back to our uh, requirements, we're going to have applied to submitted. We're going to have uh, maybe submitted to accepted. The admin is going to do that. They look over the pro profile. It looks good. They've got a button that they can clip. They can click. It says accepted, um, uh, under review, rejected. See, those are things the admin's going to do. So I don't know. We may have one. And see, now that now that I'm looking at this, we may want to have a single method that just says status change. And like now that I'm thinking this through and we're talking through it, that's probably going to make more sense that we'd have a single method that's going to be profile status change. And it's going to accept, it's probably just going to accept a single Argue, well, it's going to have two arguments because one is going to be the user ID, so the user's profile that's going to change. But then probably all we need, the only other argument is whatever the new status is, right? So whatever the status was, we don't really care about what it was. It's just we're going to change it to this new thing. So that can be some refactoring that we can do down, down the road. But currently, I just added, you know, again, the idea was just to get the wiring in place. If we want to change the method here, and again, Again, looking at the different profile statuses that we can have, there's at least one, two, three, four, five. Rather than having five different methods that does each of these things, it's probably going to be smarter to have a single method that would encompass all the profile um, changes. Because again, all we're doing is changing that single field, changing that profile status field that the user has. And while we're thinking about that, let's just look at, just sanity check that. I'm going to go to... And then let's go to rail C. And then if I go to user.last, maybe. Yeah. So this is the user. Notice the profile status is applied here, right? And that's because I've already clicked the button when a user first signs up. User.first. So they're in applied status to let's see user dot find two. Now they're in applied status too. That's that's making me wonder now. Let's uh let's do this. Let's sign up for a new user. So this one's gonna be 15. One of the quirks of the console is, I think we'll see unless, unless I'm wrong, we're, we're about to see. Well, let's see right now. User.last. No, it does. Let's say one of the quirks of it, sometimes you have to update, you just know that there's a update, bang, or exclamation. Uh, okay. User.update. Hmm. 
Well, from scratch, what I was going to say, in, in the past, the database changes aren't always reflected in the console, and sometimes you have to uh, update the, the database, but that, I, I'm not seeing that now, so that may be a different use, use case. Um, okay, so for our user here, notice uh, this is the user I just created. Yeah, so the default status is applied. And then if I go here, okay, submit for review. So I'm going to click that button and let's see what happened in the console. Um, show. Okay, so here I did a post request. I called my applied, applied to submitted method. I'm not seeing the database get updated, so I think I missed. Yeah, I think our current user is not getting submitted, so that that's not quite uh, something's not quite working there. So we'll, we'll need to go in and figure that that out. Because if I go here and I do uh, user dot last, yeah, he's he's still in this applied state, so sure. it's it's not not quite working the way it should. Or, right now. Um, in fact, let's go ahead and let's de debug it now. Let's see how far we can get since we've got time. Yeah, we've got about 15 minutes. So in this case, uh, user.profile. Okay. So in fact, based on, we we talked about this issue earlier. What, what, what step in do we think we're missing here? Think about when we talked about creating and updating and all, all of those things. I don't know. So in this case, we're calling the applied to submitted. We're going to our at, at user dot profile status. We're changing it or updating it to user dot profile status equals one. But then we're just stopping. What else do we need to do? Well, we need to create it. Well, no, the user's already created, right? That, that's what this at, at user o o object is. And that's our current user that we're oh, logged so in So then we got to save it to the... right. Right, we, we've, yeah, right. We, we've got to yeah. save it. We're not actually saving it. So let's do, yeah. I don't know, that user.save maybe. Let's see if that works. And then, so I'm going to just refresh this to make sure refresh. that's refreshed. And then let's click our button again. And then let's go to our console and see if we see something different. Ooh, okay. So now we see that, right? Yeah. Update users, set updated at, set profile status to one. And now let's go back to our console and see uh, user got last. Yeah, so now it changed our profile status from applied. We were at applied where it's submitted now, right? Yeah. Now, this is a bit ver verbose here. What can we replace this with? Based on what we learned in our videos, we, we talked about. We should be able to have just one update method there. Right? So we can do all right user dot update and then uh, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just gonna guess here. Profile status equals one. Don't know if that that'll work or not. If you if if, if you Google it and find a dot documentation before I do this this test, then. So we can what we can do is change our status back to. In fact, we'll just change it to something random um so let's do this u equals so now we're dealing with a user object and i can you do u dot profile status equals uh so let me see what we were changing it to here and we yeah we need to talk about these numbers versus we're even though we're setting yeah, status right. to numbers yeah. we're seeing some text so why, why is that we'll look at that uh, we'll look at that after we do this test. So let's change it to two equals two and you dot save. All right, so now it's under review. All right. And then we change this to an update statement rather than do an explicit save. And now let's go back and do it again. Oh. Okay, so all right, th this is not, this this uh, syntax is not not right. So let's ask Aunt Google about our Rails update method. Hmm. 
Okay, person.update. So we need to pass in who we're updating. I think that's what that is. And then the attribute. So in addition to, yeah, here we're saying at user.profile status. Well, I don't know about that because we've got, we already know who we're updating based off this at user method. So let's see here. Do we need to do all, we shouldn't need to do all this. Let's see. ID and attribute, I'm surprised. I need the ID in there. But let's just do it and see if that fixes it. I mean, the reason I'm, I feel like I shouldn't have to do that because we've got a, a, a at user, which is a specific user instance. Right. But let's just do it and see what happens. What's the error? Oh, okay. I, I see what the problem is. Actually, let's take that out That's of there. Gotta be a Got to be a fat arrow instead of an eight. Uh, well, no. We just need to move. It could be, but the we can also do that. Okay. I think. There we go. Well, mm -hmm. now we're, we're 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 still not guaranteed it's going to work. That that just means just just so you know that just means the syntax is right. At least it's valid syntax. But again, we're in a uh, let's go make sure we we're in an under review status right now. We want to move it to submit for review. Okay. Now, just as a note here, in fact, I'll add that to our. Uh, we should have. Um, Let's see, we need, we should redirect and uh, let's see. Um, let's see, I'm just gonna say give appropriate indication to user after they click the button. So we should be, um, Yeah, we should display something on the screen here, right? When we, when we click submit for review button, you know, some confetti. Yeah, there should, should be some user UI stuff there. Yeah, the, the, so there's some confetti should fly across the screen and say, congratulations, you know, the uh, that's who code has received your, your submission. And, you know, just some kind of visual indication that, okay, yeah, you click the button and it works. Because uh, otherwise, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to keep clicking this button, like, okay, is this working or not? Yeah, and then, of right. course, we're going to be sending an e email. Uh, we'll be sending an email notification on the other side, too. Okay. And so, if we go here and look, I think I clicked the button twice. That's why we're seeing the, these other ones here. But I think yeah, this okay. is the one initial one we ran. And then, if we go here and do user, uh, well, we're still in a, a under re review, so that might not have worked. Well, I think the other thing would be the other way. The other thing that would help here is we could put the um, put that redirection in there to see what. Well, what I was going to say we could actually put the um, the status here, so we could actually see it when it gets up updated. So this would be profile status, profile. Yeah, okay. Status, and this would be current user dot. Let's see if we see that. So profile, okay, so it is in a submitted state. So see, this may be one of those weird co quick, oh yeah, and I think that's the quinky dink thing here is, so notice you is still saying under review, although we're seeing submitted here. And the reason that is, yeah. is because when we initially ran this U equals user dot find whatever, uh, user dot last, that's sort of a snapshot in time of what was in the database then. So if we do user dot last now, ah, okay. you get a yeah. submit. So that again, there's a bunch of little quirks like that. O over time, you'll, 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 you'll warm up to how the console works but just again don't let that fool yeah, you either okay. because even though we thought we loaded at, at the time we ran 
u equals user dot last yeah. Yeah. from 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 this point on anytime we run u we're only getting again that snapshot shot in time when we actually uh when we actually um set u to user dot last if we want to get an updated view of user dot last or sort of a current what's currently in the database we actually have to run that active record or active yeah i think that would be an active record call user dot last okay so again, that's sub submitting. Okay, last thing before we go is, uh, why is it that we're setting, we yeah, are numbers, using numbers yeah. to set a profile status, but then for instance, when we view it here, we don't see profile status as one, we see profile status as submitted. And that is because we used enums e or enums, depending on, whether you say ant or aunt or pecan or pecan, but let's look at our user.rb. Let's look in our user model. So I choose to use an enum. Yeah, okay. I chose to use an enum for this data type. Okay. There's a bunch of ways to go here. And again, it's outside of the scope of what we'll talk about here. You can read up on enums to your heart's de desire on the interwebs. But um, essentially what an enum, the way I teach, and I actually just, you know, I, I've been doing software development for about 10, 10 years, actually writing code. And actually only within the last couple of years have I warmed up to enums and what they are. And actually it's because I had to teach it for my C++ class. We have, a, it's one of the sections, but the way I teach it is and so i'll just i say that to say there's a bunch of ways to think think about it but the way i like to teach it and think about it is that if you have this bespoke this bespoke group of data that uh that you want to draw from then an enum is a good way to do that so in this case we've got this profile status right and we can set profile status to anything we, we want but but we want it to be somewhat contained right i mean we've got these requirements here now these requirements may grow and change but you know, generally this profile status is gonna be something like applied, rejected, under review, accepted, needs more work. And we may come up with a couple of other of those, but we just don't want people willy nilly inside the code setting the profile status to anything they want. Yeah. I mean, if you're in there and you decide, I want profile status to be needs more work on GitHub status. I mean, you just don't wanna set the text. I mean, if you wanted to, you could go in and create a new number for it let's say right now we've only got we've got five of these you could just say six profile status equals six and then you could go in the readme now and, and i did do that in fact i could just go in the readme and say you know i could document it there but there's this concept and this is across this is not just rails this is software development in general you want self-documenting code right as much as you can write code yeah. that documents itself that's what you want to do so that's why i chose an enum here and the enum is essentially self-documenting. And, and I think, and again, I, I'll be honest, I don't know all the ins and outs here. I, I, I think maybe in our controller, when we do profile status equals one, I think maybe we could do, I don't know, let's try it and see. We've, we've got a little, we've got a couple minutes left. Let's just change it to accepted and see if this would work. I think maybe you can pass in text here. Uh, let's try it and see though. Uh, so let's say we want it to be that accepted. I don't know if this. So first off, when we refresh the page, is, is Rails going to bark at us? Because that'll, that'll tell us right off the bat that, okay, this is not, that syntax is not, okay, it didn't, didn't bark at us there. Um, so right now our user is, let's make sure we know that. Well, we, we can see the status here. Yeah, that's, we, we got the profile. So right now the status now is submitted. Now. submitted. Yeah. So if we click our button, Let's see, okay, I didn't see anything change here. Okay, no, it did, right? Yep, oh, yeah, so it changed yeah, yeah. to accepted, right? And in fact, if we go back here, so the last one, uh, profile status is three. So notice, yeah, so it works both ways. Uh, using an enum like this, when we're setting a status, we can use the corresponding index that's associated with it or we can use the text if we want so there, there's a bit of you got a bit of flexibility there but either way by defining it this way inside our user model uh we're sort of documenting our own code right rather than 
Now we could just use an array here if we, we want wanted to. I mean, well, for, first off, just to take it all, just to take it all on the most simplified way, we could just have created an integer field and we could have profile status set to int, right? And uh, in fact, that'll be a good, that's a good question. What did I define it as in the migration? I think I did, uh, yeah, add profile status. Yeah, so I set it to an integer here, but we could have just yeah, left okay. it there and we could have not defined anything inside here and just, you know, again, we could get together and, and as the developers working on the code and we can just decide that, okay, zero is gonna be a submitted status one is going to be applied to and we could define as whatever we want and we could just stick some notes inside the comments here which you which you can see i did which is fine but really i could sort of take this out if i wanted to now right i mean i'll leave it there for, for now but having used this uh enum data type it really creates this self-documenting code for us. And yeah, we can go in and change this, but if I want a new status, now I have to go in and add, you know, needs, need, need, needs more work or needs more commits on their GitHub pro profile. And I could set that, you know, I could set that number to six. Um, so so that, the enum that, really helps with long-term maintainability. As it well. does, right, right. It allows, changing it. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it allows it to grow in, a, in a, a more structured way. Now, one of the things we'll think about here is for role, notice we didn't do anything for role, or I, I should yeah, say. Yeah, so I, that was one I of did. the things I was thinking. Yeah, I was just going to go ahead that in there and see. If so now work. that we've got a, a model for that, that's something we want to look at. I mean, I don't, I, I'd want to think more about it to make sure it's the right way to go. But I think that, and enum for role is probably a good way to go too. Uh, and it's just, again, a more structured way, because I think all I did, again, I think when I firstly, and when I initially created it for, for role, I just said, well, we'll just self, in fact, we, yeah, yeah, in fact, that, that's what this, this, that's what this uh, text was, was for, it was actually for role, not for the enum pro, profile, I had that in, and, and even when I was doing this, I was like, mm, this doesn't feel right, and so, and I think that's when it occurred to me, when I was thinking about profile status, okay, I've got this same, I've got this other status here, I've just got random numbers that's going to represent the various statuses. And I was like, man, this just feels janky. And so that's sort of when, at least in, in my mind, I made the connection between an enum and, okay, this, this is the right case. This is the right use case for an e, enum. And, and again, I think we can do the same thing for role. I think we could create enum role and they, we could go ahead and add our, our various roles there. Now that, that may break down. I mean, I was thinking about it from a standpoint of do we, you know, I, I mean, a, a user can have a role and they can be admin and mentor. I'm just thinking all the roles in Vetsu code we have, you know, um, so I don't know that may be helpful or may not be. I, I mean, one way, a lot, the way a lot of people handle an admin role is it's just simply a Boolean field. So that, that's another way to go. Yeah. And we, we may just want to add men or not, and then we could create another profile status or something for whether you're a mentor. But but I mean the question is, you know, that that's probably overkill right now, uh, for, you know, because the mentors, I mean, either you're an admin or you're not, and I, I don't know that mentors would want to see, you know, we, we'd want to get so granular with who could see what, you know, that we would start to break it down. So, okay, admins can see this, but mentors can, maybe they can see all the list of students, but they can't see these other things. And that's probably more than we want to get, we want to get into right now. So we may go back again. Now we've, we've sort of got some, this honeymoon period where we're just, we're in the development environment. Now the key is, you know, it's, it's easy to do these things now that we're not in production. Once we actually push this to Vetsu code and assuming, um, you know, um, um, the, the guys, um, the guys who are using it and students start signing up for accounts, that that's when it becomes harder to change those things because if we, we so we've got to make some, there's, there's some design decisions that, you know, we, we have to make now. Now that, that doesn't mean we can't change them later, but it's obviously way more painful because right now, if we decide, okay, let, let's just go with a Boolean field for the ad, admin and you're either a Boolean, you're either an admin or you're, you're not. And that's a simpler what way to do it. Uh, that, that's an easy way to, uh, that's an easy change to make now. Once we get users signing up and using the app, it's gonna be much tougher to make that change then. 
The other thing I was thinking real quick too is that, well, I got that here, the validation, we're gonna need some validation on the recruits profile. So as part of this, um, as part of this apply to submitted method, we should probably check and make sure that these fields are pop populated, right? We don't want somebody to submit an application, you know, if they haven't done their, they haven't signed up for their GitHub pro profile yet and don't have a GitHub username, we don't, we don't want them to submit it. So we could probably add some, it'd be smart to add some validation here. So, and if they click the button, and in fact, I was gonna say, if they click the button, they get a message that says, please fill out these fields, but maybe they can't even click the button. The button's, the button's grayed out, you know, until they fill these, 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 these things in. Um, and then the other thing I was thinking, oh yeah, the other thing I was thinking it'd be nice is to have a visual indication, a quick way to look and see what's filled out and what's not. Uh, or actually, what I was thinking is have, uh, I'm thinking of a little toggle slide button, you know, similar to what's on your iPhone, you click it and it's like green or not. So the recruit can sort of keep track, okay, am I finished with this or not? Like they could go in and, and go ahead and have their GitHub, uh, for instance, their pre-work their their pre -work link, and you've been through this, you can be working on it, but you're not quite sort of finished with it yet, right? So I was thinking it'd be nice right, to have a, right. a visual indicator there that, okay, I'm like, I'm finished with, with, with the pre-work. Like I'm, I'm not ready to submit, I'm not ready to submit the whole profile for review yet, but I'm, I'm, I'm done with, with this one. You know, um, I'm working on the repo and I've started work, but I'm, I'm not hundred percent done, done with it yet. So have a little something. So that's something to think about from a data standpoint that again, that those are database fields for each one of these little things that we're going to need to keep track of. So what's, uh, what's an efficient way to do that? Okay. 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 I got so that's some marching something, orders there. Yeah, that's something yep. to work on that. And then what else did I put issues? Uh, I mean, these are sort of low hanging fruit. Like right now the show view is using current user rather than at user. In fact, we're not looking, let me see, or I may have already fixed that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I used that one at the, the first one and then I just copied all of those instead of taking the opportunity to fix it. That'll be an yeah, easy. Yeah, well, but no, now see, now that I'm thinking about it, why is that app user shows using current user? So when logged in, oh, okay, that's the problem, right? When you're logged in as the admin user and you're looking at other people's pro, pro, profiles, since it's using current user, it's only show showing your, it's showing your oh, information yeah. in show. So it's not an issue for this user because they're they're not an admin, they're not looking, but if I log out and I log in, I think my admin user is this guy. Well, let's do this. Um, I, I might not have an admin user because I think I threw everybody away. User dot all. Oh. Uh, that's not good. There's some eyes on say you can use Y to get to get a YAML view, but I think there's a pretty print view. But let's see, admin. It'll be roll because admin. Okay, roll. Thank you. Thank right? you. Yeah, right. Uh, roll is five. Yeah, there's one. Who is this guy? What's the email address? Uh, Gmail, eight, is it right? Yeah, eight. Mark Locklear, eight. <laughs> Test. Mr. To recruits. Well, that's not what we're working it. I don't know why that is. Anyway, the problem with that using current user instead of at user is that uh, again, if you're an admin and you're looking at other people's profiles, it's only showing your, your your data. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I have that where I come in as a test <clears throat> as my admin, and then it's got another name at the top instead of registering who it is. So there's a yeah. So right, there's some just some logical the things we wanna we wanna fix. So when the admins are, are logged in, they're getting they're getting an appropriate view. Yeah. Okay, our time is up. In fact, we're, we're 10 minutes over. Questions? Oh, man. Okay, sorry. Comments? Nope. Anything? Thanks. 
Nope. I got some right. marching orders there to get yeah. back in at it. So, so I just appreciate if, it, sir. Yeah. If, if you have any questions, just hit, hit me up in Slack. Sure will. Thanks All so right. much. Appreciate Thank your you. time. Bye.